Welcome to World History with Mr. Giese. As we begin our discussion to answer the question of what allows or causes civilizations to develop and evolve, we'll first discuss the underlying factors to the broadest pattern of history, as introduced in Guns, Germs, and Steel by Jared Diamond. While we discuss these factors, we will be able to examine why some countries were able to expand, adapt, and evolve at a much quicker rate than other areas of the globe. The first factor that Diamond presents is that of a continent being on a east-west axis. When a continent is along this axis, the climate zones are larger and this has a trickle-down effect to some other factors that will come up later. In contrast, if the con continent is along a north-south axis, the climate zones are not as expansive and slow the development of these other factors. The east-west axis allows for many suitable wild species of plants and animals. As the climates are similar for a larger land mass across the continent, this allows for these species to easily spread from one end to the next. The next factor is that of domestication of plants and animals. Because there are more suitable wild species in the areas of a continent on an east to west axis, this allows for a larger pool to choose from when deciding what plants and animals to domesticate. When the climate's being similar, the plants that grow in a particular area can now spread easier to one area uh, and then start to domesticate them. As all people in the area start to domesticate the same plants and animals, they start to share their techniques of farming. As they continue to collaborate, improvements are made to the techniques and make it easier to produce larger numbers of these crops. Populations start to get larger in certain areas where farming techniques allow for a surplus of food. Now a nomadic lifestyle is no longer a necessity as a surplus of food has now become available. This leads to large, dense, sedentary, stratified societies that can start to specialize in other areas than farming. As civilizations do not have to worry about surviving anymore, they can use their time to help develop their civilizations. As populations become more dense, people no longer have to worry about farming for survival. Remember, there's technology that allows a higher production of food. However, what do these people do with their time if they do not have to farm? Non-farmers can now specialize in other areas that a society would need or want to make life better. One of those areas of improvement is in the tools of conquest. Through a process of survival and some interactions with other cultures, people start to develop better ways to protect their people. Weapons became a first piece to furthering a civilization. As society becomes more powerful, inevitably, they begin to expand their influence in areas of less advancement. They do this through developing technology that allows them to travel to areas that were once impossible. The next area would be dealing with the stratified societies and having a systematic form of government. As people no longer have to worry about their survival from a food perspective, they can start looking at people working in leadership. People begin to figure out how to develop societies that have rules and consequences. This develops a society in keeping order and in theory helps in dealing with issues that become present as a society starts to change. This development of civilization is not all positive though. When you have a large population of people in one area, the spread of diseases can happen rapidly. If you add in that animals are now living within this population and they brought some illnesses and that humans had not been exposed to, now you have the formula for epidemic diseases to spread within the population of the civilization. However, over time, these people will develop immunity toward these diseases and this will prove to be instrumental to their survival as they start to spread to other areas around the globe. As we move forward, be ready to investigate how some of these advantages allow some civilizations to expand, adapt, and evolve at a much quicker rate than other areas of the globe.